Hey, what's up guys, Jakey here. Today, I'm gonna be going over what I do to reinstall Windows Fresh. Every now and then, I will do a fresh install of Windows, like maybe once or twice a year, or whenever I install a new component, like a new CPU or a new GPU, I always do a fresh install of Windows. This is just a good way to troubleshoot anything that's going wrong with your computer. If you find that you are crashing a lot in programs or even in games, doing a fresh install of Windows can kind of give you that reset that you need to fix any issues. First things first, you want to make sure that you back up everything that's important to you, whether that's on a flash drive or on the cloud. Personally, I just leave everything that I want to keep on my second SSD because the only thing that's going to get wiped here is the SSD where you install your Windows. If you only have one SSD, then that means you're going to be wiping that SSD, which means you want to back up everything onto an external drive or the cloud. But if you have two SSDs, one for Windows, then you can put everything on the non-Windows SSD, which saves you from having to use a external drive or using the cloud. First things first, you want to Google Windows 11 installer and make sure you go to the official Microsoft website. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can easily click on that. Once here, you want to scroll down until you see create Windows 11 installation media and then you just want to click download now on that and it will download a little executable file. Next, you want to make sure you have a flash drive that has at least eight gigabytes of storage because that's how much storage the Windows 11 installer needs. Then you're just going to plug the flash drive into your computer and make sure you do a format on it so that it is on its default state. And so you're just going to run the Windows 11 installer and it's going to prompt you to select the flash drive that you want to install it to. And then you're just going to leave use the recommended options for this PC checked. You're going to go through and you're just going to follow all of the prompts and it's going to download the Windows 11 installer onto that flash drive, which might take a little bit of waiting. By the way, one thing to note is that all of your programs will be uninstalled. So anything you have installed onto your computer on the Windows drive is going to be uninstalled. So make sure you plan accordingly. And again, make sure you back up all of your sensitive files because you don't want to delete anything that's important to you. This includes stuff like your OBS settings if you are a content creator. For me personally, I back up my OBS settings, stuff like my Adobe Premiere effects and render settings. And obviously like pictures and documents, stuff like that, make sure you back those up. So after you have the Windows 11 installer on the USB, you're going to open your start menu and search for advanced startup. And with the flash drive plugged in, you're going to click restart now on the advanced startup and you are going to click restart. Once your computer restarts, it should bring you to a screen that looks something like this. You're going to click on use a device and then you're going to select your USB flash drive that you have plugged in. Your computer will probably restart a couple times throughout this entire process, which is completely normal. So after your computer restarts, you should see the Windows 11 setup screen. Here you can choose the language you want to install as well as your time and currency. For me, that's English. And then here you're going to check everything, select Windows 11, and you're also going to select your keyboard input method, which in my case is the US keyboard. For the product key, you're just going to click, I don't have a product key for now because you're going to sign into your Windows account. And then for the addition of Windows, I select 11 Home, and you're just going to click throughout these menus. Now this part here is pretty important. If you have everything saved to your non-Windows disk, you want to be very careful and make sure you don't delete anything from your non-Windows disk. You want to select the disk that is for your Windows only, which for me in this case is disk 1. And I'm just going to delete everything that pertains to disk one. So I just click on everything that's relating to disk one and then I click delete. And then once your Windows disk is completely wiped, you can select it and choose to install Windows 11 on that disk. So after that, your computer is gonna restart a couple times and then you're just gonna go through the Windows 11 installer, which is pretty straightforward. Once you're booted fully into Windows, the first thing I do is I go into my Windows update and I make sure that I install all of the Windows updates so I even go into the advanced option here and make sure I install the optional updates as well. You can see there's a huge list of updates, which is normal once you fresh install Windows. So make sure you install all of these updates. And I also close out of the MSI driver utility installer because I prefer to download all of that myself and I don't want any bloatware. Speaking of bloatware, once you have all of the Windows updates installed, now's a really good time to uninstall any bloatware that comes with Windows. You can do this very easily by opening up your settings, going over to apps, 
installed apps and then in here just find stuff that windows installs for you that you don't want i've already uninstalled most of the bloatware but stuff like sticky notes for example solitaire which is the card game that windows preloads even onedrive if you don't use onedrive you can uninstall that as well as like the xbox app and all of that other stuff if you don't use it make sure you uninstall that after that i make sure to go to my motherboard page you can just google your motherboard model and then if you go to the support page, you can find all of these downloads for the BIOS chipset, as well as any other drivers that are essential for your motherboard, like the LAN drivers, Wi-Fi drivers, and Bluetooth drivers. I make sure that I download all of these and that I'm up to date. After that, I also make sure to download any programs that I use. So obviously, fresh installing Windows is going to delete all of your programs that you had. So I re-download WinRAR, Discord, Spotify, basically everything that I need to use on my computer, I make sure to re-download that. Again, I do this all after I finish downloading the window updates and then I restart my computer is when I start to download all of the programs that I need, as well as those chipset drivers for my motherboard. I also download the NVIDIA app to update my graphics drivers. You don't have to do this, you can download the graphics drivers on their own, but I actually do like having the Win NVIDIA app just so I can automatically update my drivers. It doesn't really impact performance too much. I know a lot of people are divided on this online. Some people say that the NVIDIA app cuts a lot of your frames, but I feel like they've optimized it to the point where it doesn't really impact your frames at all. So I just like having the NVIDIA app. But you can see here, I'm installing the AMD chipset driver, and this does require me to restart my computer. So after I do the Windows updates, my priority is actually the chipset drivers for my motherboard and CPU. And then after that, the graphics drivers as well. And then I'll restart one more time. And then after that, I will install all of my programs and apps. So after you've installed all of your motherboard chipset drivers, as well as the latest BIOS, what you should do is make sure that your RAM is overclocked properly. So how you're going to do this is just restart your computer. And then you're just going to spam either the delete key or the F2 key in order to get into your BIOS, depending on which motherboard you have. It's going to vary from motherboard to motherboard. And that's going to bring me into my BIOS. So inside of here, the main thing we want to do is just make sure we're setting either an XMP profile if you're on Intel or an Expo profile if you're on AMD to make sure that your RAM is running at the correct speed. So for me, it's as simple as just clicking this little Expo profile here, and that's really all I have to do. You can double check just by going to your RAM here and checking what the current RAM frequency is, and you can also see what the profile is as well. And then after that, there is a couple of other things I do. First, I disable my integrated graphics because I have a dedicated graphics card, so there's really no reason for me to have the integrated graphics enabled here. So I do that, and then next I also make sure that I turn on memory context restore. This is for AM5 platform. If you have this disabled or even on auto, sometimes it can take a really long time to boot into your OS. So for AM5 platform, turning on memory context restore can help speed up those boot times. But those are pretty much the main things that I do in my BIOS. And then after that, I just close out and save the changes and it should reboot you back into your OS. So after we've overclocked our RAM properly in our BIOS, we want to make sure that that actually applied. So we're going to right click on our taskbar, click on task manager, and then go over to performance. And we're going to check under memory. We're going to check our speed and make sure that it's the correct speed that we set in our BIOS. And if you have an integrated GPU, you can make sure that it's not enabled by just looking here. If you see the integrated GPU, that means you didn't disable it. But if you don't see your integrated GPU here and you only see your main GPU, then you're good to go. So a couple things that I do in terms of the window settings is number one is going to be the storage sense. So if you just open up your start menu and you look up storage, you'll see storage settings here. You want to click on that and it's going to open this up. So I make sure that I have storage sense turned on. And then if you actually click inside of storage sense, you want to make sure that automatic user content cleanup is on and also keep Windows running smoothly by automatically cleaning up temporary system and files. You want to have this checked and then I have it set so that storage sense is run every single week and also recycle bin files are deleted every 30 days. Obviously, you can change this to whatever you want, but I make sure that this is turned on. And then next I go down to personalization here and I change this to whatever I want. So I do solid color and just black for my background because I don't need anything crazy. And I go down to colors and you want to make sure you turn off transparency effects. This helps a little bit with performance if you're on a lower end system because it doesn't have to render in those transparency effects. And then also I just prefer dark mode, but that's personal preference. After that, you want to go down here to gaming, go down to game bar and then make sure that game bar here is turned off. 
Underneath the graphics settings, I have some people ask me about this as well. I don't touch anything in here. This is on by default. And then down here in hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, I have this left on by default. And then under gaming here as well, in game mode, I have game mode on, which is default. Next, you want to open up your start menu again and search defrag. And then you want to click on defragment and optimize drives. I have this set so that my drives get defragmented and trimmed weekly. Another thing you want to do is open up your control panel and then type mouse. Click on change mouse settings and then we're going to go over to pointer options and we are going to uncheck enhance pointer precision to turn off any windows induced mouse acceleration and then you're just going to click apply and OK. One more thing to go over is my NVIDIA 3D settings. So if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can right click on your desktop, click show more options and then open up the NVIDIA control panel. Inside of here, I actually don't change anything. So in adjust image settings with preview, I have it left on let the 3D application decide, which is default, and then manage 3D settings. Nothing here is touched because I have this set to let 3D application decide. And then I don't touch anything else in here. This is use default color settings. I of course make sure my refresh rate is on the highest possible, which in my case is 600. You can also change this inside your display settings. So if you go to display settings, scroll down, go to advanced display, make sure that under refresh rate, you have this set to the highest possible so that you're utilizing the full capabilities of your monitor. And then desktop color settings, I don't change anything in here either. This is all default. Everything in here is all default. Next up, we're gonna make sure we don't have anything in our startup programs that we don't want. So you're gonna right click on your task bar and you're gonna to go to task manager. And then next you're gonna to go to startup apps and we're gonna check whatever is in here. I pretty much disable everything that I don't use and then make sure that you have things that you do use on enabled. So if there's anything in here that you don't want starting with your computer, then you are going to disable that. You also wanna open up your start menu and search for power plan, and you're gonna go choose a power plan. So inside of here, most people actually say that balanced is fine now, especially with the latest Windows update and the way that AMD is run on Windows 11. Balanced is perfectly fine. I'm on high performance, but honestly, I don't think it really matters too much. You can either do balanced or high performance. It's really up to you. I think high performance will just make it so that your CPU runs in higher clock speeds, even if you're not really using anything demanding on it. So it might draw a little bit more energy, but power plan is really up to you. I do high performance personally. And that's pretty much it guys. That is basically how I fresh install Windows to get the optimal Valorant performance. Hope this video helps you guys out and if it did make sure you leave a like comment and subscribe and if you have any questions go ahead and leave them in the comment section below but that's pretty much it i'll see you guys in the next one peace